So, there's this girl named Luba. Her parents are Mikhail and Ludmila Pagarico. Luba was born on July 19, 1986, and she grew up with her sisters in a village called Koptolovo. It's located in the Alapivsky district of the Sverdlovsk region, where her family lived. Her dad was a sailor, and Luba was really proud of him. She even made sure to wish him a happy Navy day. The family was pretty big, but they were all close and got together as often as they could. They even went on holidays together. Luba had a bunch of pictures of her family on her social media pages like Vcontact and Adnoklesniki. Unfortunately, Luba had a really tragic fate. There was this little village in the Urals that got some really shocking news on December 22, 2022. Lyubov Belyashina, who was already a mother of five and had split up with her husband, disappeared. She was only 36 years old. Her ex-husband, who she was co-parenting with, got worried when he couldn't reach her and went to the police. Friends and family were really confused and didn't know what to think. They searched the area while volunteers and police also looked for her. Everyone was just trying to figure out what happened and started to suspect each other. On that day, Lyubov had plans to go to a nearby town and rent an apartment so she could move out from her ex-husband's place. She wanted to check out the new place, so she went to see it. Lyubov's dad and sister lived in Reza, so she planned to go visit them as well. To get there, she asked her ex-father-in-law Dmitri for a ride. He called her at around 6.30 in the morning to coordinate the pickup time, but her phone was busy and she didn't call back. Dmitri couldn't reach her, so he just decided to go to work and figured she would make her own way there. On that day, Lyubov had plans to go to a nearby town and rent an apartment so she could move out from her ex-husband's place. She wanted to check out the new place, so she went to see it. Lyubov's dad and sister lived in Reza, so she planned to go visit them as well. To get there, she asked her ex-father-in-law Dmitri for a ride. He called her at around 6.30 in the morning to coordinate the pickup time, but her phone was busy and she didn't call back. Dmitri couldn't reach her, so he just decided to go to work and figured she would make her own way there. At first, everyone assumed that Lyubov had just gone to town on her own, but when she didn't come back that evening, her ex-husband got worried. He couldn't call her himself because his number was blocked, so he asked her mother to try to reach her. But no one could get a hold of her. They even called her relatives in Resh, but no one had seen her that day. They reached out to the local police, but at first, they said they had to wait three days before they could officially search for an adult who was missing. However, they did take a report that same evening. For almost three weeks, volunteers searched the woods along the highway, and the police interviewed her family members. Lyubov's ex-husband, Alexander, even took a polygraph test, and it showed that he had nothing to do with her disappearance. When the weather got really cold, they had to stop searching the woods. Instead, they started an informational search. On New Year's Eve, all of Lyubov's friends and family made a wish that she would be found. Her ex-husband even told her mother that he would take care of her no matter what, even if she was disabled. But unfortunately, there was still no news about Lyubov. Everyone was pretty sure that the woman decided to go to town by herself, but she didn't come back in the evening. Her ex-husband got worried and was the first to notice her absence. He asked her mother to call Lyubov. His number was blocked, but she wasn't available. So they called her relatives in Resh and found out that she didn't visit her father or sister that day. They even called the district policeman, who initially said they couldn't start searching for her since it hadn't been three days yet which is the standard protocol for adults, but they still took a police report on the same evening. For almost three weeks, they searched for Lyubov. Volunteers thoroughly searched the woods along the highway, and the police interviewed her relatives. Her ex-husband, Alexander, was even given a polygraph test, and the results showed that he had nothing to do with her disappearance. But when the harsh winter frost came, the search had to be stopped, and they initiated an informational search. On New Year's Eve, all their friends and relatives made a wish that Lyubov would be found. Her ex-husband even told her mother that he didn't care about her condition. Even if she was crippled or disabled, he would still take care of her. 
But still, there was no news. Lyubov has been married twice. Her first marriage was with Alexei Yadrishnikov on April 18th, 2005 in the town of Resch, and they had a son named Maxim. Then, on April 16th, 2010, she married Alexander Belyashin, who she had known since fifth grade, and they had a daughter named Nastia on April 30th, 2008. On their wedding day, Lyubov decided to wear a blue dress instead of the traditional white one. After getting married, the couple had three more children, two daughters, one of them named Maria, and a son named Igor. However, their personal life was quite challenging. Alexander had previous convictions and would often become jealous, blackmail, threaten, insult, and even physically abuse Lyubov. There were also rumors circulating in the village that he had cheated on her with her sister, Eugenia. According to Alexander's mother, the couple had divorced twice before and were finally separated by the court on October 11, 2022. However, they still continued to live together. Lyubov and Alexander were together for 15 years before something happened that caused them to separate. Their relatives had different ideas about what happened, but many of them suspected Alexander who was 37 years old at the time. He denied any wrongdoing, but eventually admitted that he did raise his hand against Lyubov in August, before they got divorced. Apparently, he was really drunk and didn't mean to hurt her, but she fell off the porch and ended up in the hospital. Alexander was fined 13,000 rubles and warned that if he did it again, he could go to jail. Alexander claims that he never touched Lyubov again after that incident but people in the village still spread rumors that he beat her and kicked her out of the house. However, he says that Lyubov would often come home drunk and yell at him, so he would go to another room to avoid conflict. Lyubov's mother, Ludmilla, spoke to Channel 4 and expressed her fears about Alexander. She said, I'm afraid he'll kill me. She also described Alexander as being, okay, when he's sober, but when he's drunk, he becomes very aggressive. The family with children had support from both sides of their parents, who did what they could to help. The husband worked on a grader while the wife was a sales clerk at the success store in the village. Even though their income wasn't very high for a big family, they received good financial assistance from Lyubov's parents. Her mother went as far as to buy them a Largus car on credit so that her son-in-law could commute to work in town. Alexander's mother and stepfather also made themselves available to see their grandchildren whenever they were needed. As for the children's paternity, there were rumors in the village according to Alexander's relatives. They claimed that not all of the children were his and that the youngest daughter didn't resemble him at all. Risa, however, insists that these rumors were not unfounded and that there were reasons behind them. The father of the family was hurt by these insinuations and became irritated. On the other hand, the family's friends and relatives say that these suspicions were just Alexander's own fantasies. Despite all of this, he loved all of the children and considered them his own. Since the ex-spouses had a complicated relationship, Alexander was seen as the main suspect when Luba disappeared. However, he was able to pass a polygraph test that showed he wasn't involved. Anastasia, their older daughter, testified that her father was at home when her mother left in the early morning of December 22nd. The schoolgirl also took a polygraph test, with her father's consent. The older son mentioned that the store where their mom worked was robbed in November, a month before she disappeared. She had personally told him about it. The guard was drunk, and the alarm was only on the door, so the robbers broke in through the window, taking the money that was kept in a bag. It appeared as though the robbers had been tipped off, and he thinks it could have been one of his colleagues who orchestrated it. His mother may have been aware of who was involved since she had a good relationship with her colleagues, and she may have been asked to keep quiet. However, he doesn't think his mom was a criminal, which made her a potential threat to the real criminals. She couldn't keep something like that to herself, and she was planning to quit her job and move to Resh after New Year. Therefore, someone involved in the robbery could have done something to her. Lyubov Belyashina's ex-husband thinks that her colleagues might know something about her disappearance, but are hiding the truth. After the robbery, Luba told him that one of her colleagues, who was in charge of the money, forgot to put it in the safe, 
which had around 100,000 rubles in it. He suspects that this colleague might have done it intentionally. Alexander also claims that he hacked her phone and found out that she had been calling her ex-convict, who had killed someone and just got out of prison. In the days leading up to Luba's disappearance, there was a strange white car parked outside the store, which wasn't from the village. Alexander believes that Luba's colleagues should be questioned with a lie detector test. However, it was later revealed that Luba herself complained to her younger sister a few days before her disappearance, saying that she had a bad feeling. She did not mention any names in her messages, but said that she was tired and had no strength left. She cried every night, and her eyes hurt. Her ex-husband was mentally and verbally abusive to her, insulting her in every way possible and even writing to her boyfriend. Lyubov's messages to her sister included one where she said, He said something would happen in two days and no one would help. If anything happens to me, it's his fault. So, on January 10th, things got really intense. Investigators showed up at Alexander's house and started searching his car. They took it away on a tow truck for inspection and brought Alexander to the Alapivsk Investigation Department. They even asked him to take another polygraph test. According to Alexander's mother, he was really nervous and shaky before they took him away. He wanted to refuse the test, but they insisted. Later that evening, he called his mother from a different phone, which the police had apparently given him. He said, If I don't come back today, I'll never come back. The next morning, he called again from a different number saying, They locked me up, they won't let me out again. On the same day, investigators also searched Dimitri's car and brought him in for a polygraph test. Even Alexander's two daughters, Nastia and Masha, were taken in for questioning along with Dimitri's daughters, Lubav and Alexander. Despite all this, either Risa nor Dimitri, Alexander's stepfather, believed that he was guilty. The oldest granddaughter spoke about the day Lubav disappeared saying that her mother took off her black jacket and left quietly in the morning around six o'clock. Her father was asleep because he had the day off from work, and the children almost slept through school. Their grandmother had to call and wake them up. When they came home from school, their father was already home, and his car was parked nearby, under the snow. In the evening, Alexander even prepared the bathhouse for the children and called his mother. So basically, Alexander admitted to strangling his ex-girlfriend because he was jealous when she asked him to take her to a nearby town. He got charged with murder and was put in prison for two months. However, his relatives didn't believe that he actually did it and thought he only confessed because of pressure. It turns out that the reason Alexander got so jealous and angry was because Lubov was talking to an old friend named Vladimir. They've known each other since they were young, and according to Vladimir, Lubov had promised to wait for him while he was in the army, but then she ended up marrying Alexander instead. Vladimir insists that they only have a friendly relationship now and there's no reason for Alexander to be jealous. Recently, Lubov had been complaining to Vladimir about threats from her ex-husband, but she couldn't just leave everything because of her children. Her ex-husband kept telling her that she belonged to him and that he would kill her if she ever left him. However, it's a bit confusing why Lubov would ask her ex-husband to take her to see the rented apartment in Resh if she was afraid of his threats and things were so bad between them. Maybe they had come to another truce in their long, unhealthy relationship, which may be normal for some people. The official investigation states that on the day of the tragedy, Lubov asked her ex-husband to take her to the Rizevsky district to look for a new place to live. However, they got into an argument on the way and ended up getting out of the car. Unfortunately, their relationship came to a criminal end and he took Lubov's body to a bridge over the Resh River and hid it in a spruce forest, covering it with snow. This information was released in a press release from the Sverdlovsk police. So basically, the body was found in the snow after almost three weeks and it looked like the person was violently killed. Maria, who is Lubov's eldest son, showed up to court with Alexander's mother and sister. Maxim who is 17 years old and about to become an adult, hasn't been affected by the custody situation. He works and studies in Ekaterinburg and lives with Maria. Unlike his grandmother and aunt, Maxim is convinced that his stepfather is guilty. 
He even told reporters that Alexander had physically harmed his mother multiple times, and he would do anything to make sure he stays locked up for a long time. The investigator confirmed that Alexander had confessed to the crime, saying that he strangled the victim and revealed where he had hidden the body. There was one thing that still wasn't clear. They couldn't find the bag and phone of the person who died. The ex-husband said he left them nearby, but if he already admitted to doing something so terrible, why would he hide those details? During the court session, Risa couldn't take it anymore and yelled out, Sasha, tell me you're innocent. Say it. He was silent and responded with gestures. His mother and sister interpreted this as him being forced to confess. Before passing judgment, the judge asked Alexander, You're being accused of a serious crime. Do you have anything to say? Alexander replied, I didn't mean to kill her. As a result of the court's decision, he was arrested for two months and then charged with murder.